Dr. Cotter Hirschberg was a superb clinician, teacher, mentor, and writer. He was director of training in child psychiatry as well as the first dean of the Carl Menninger School of Psychiatry at the Menninger Clinic in Topeka, Kansas. From 1969 to 1975, Cotter Hirschberg served on the library's board of directors. Both he and his wife, Jean, according to former library director Jim Marvin, were a library dynamo. Both served on the library's board of trustees and together advanced the library services and collections, including donating the significant collection of West African art and artifacts from Ghana, Nigeria, Benin, Zambia, Central African Republic, Cameroon, Kingdom of Luango, which is now the Democratic Republic of Congo, Mali, Ivory Coast, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. These are examples of passport masks, called such because they are worn on the body, kept in a leather pouch, or sewn onto a piece of cloth to represent group or family affiliation. Passport masks are used by the Dan people, a group of several hundred thousand people in the western part of the Ivory Coast and into Liberia. The masks are miniature copies of family masks which act as witnesses to initiation ceremonies and are believed to offer protection, like amulets, when the owner is away from home. This is a heddle pulley, which is used in strip weaving, a process that uses very small looms to produce long, narrow strips of cloth which are later sewn together to create a larger textile, such as a blanket. The delicately carved figure on the pulley peers down at the weaver as he works and becomes his constant visual companion. This is a very early example of tourist art, an ivory tusk carved by Europeans who came to trade. 19th century colonialism in Africa can be evidenced by Europeans' representation of the other, which depicts several Africans dressed in Western clothing. The exact meaning of this spiral narrative is unclear without further investigation, but several scenarios can be identified based on observation. There is a prisoner in handcuffs, some people possibly going to or returning from market with baskets on their heads, children tagging along, a nice well-fed man, and animals including a snake and a fish. Cast in brass, traditional Ashanti culture used these weights to measure the weight of gold dust when gold dust was used for currency. The gold weights are placed on a pair of scales, and the weight is compared with the weight of a pile of gold dust, which was mined and panned in great quantities. The pattern and shape of each weight carries a different meaning, often related to the myths, proverbs, and customs of the Ashanti culture. This resembles a Mwana Pwo mask. Pwo meaning woman, Mwana meaning young, so young girl. It is the symbolic pendant to the male mask, Chiango. Mwana Pwo masks, danced at festivals for entertainment, are said to bestow increased fertility on the spectators. The masks represent female ancestors depicted as beautiful young women with high foreheads, elaborate hairstyles, balanced features, filed teeth, slender noses, scarification, and an elliptical mouth, all qualities of feminine beauty among the Chokwe peoples. Giving birth to twins is more frequent among the Yoruba peoples than among any other peoples of Africa. As infant mortality is high, a cult of twins developed that would ensure healthy babies and provide for a means to mourn and honor those who had died so they would not bring evil to the household. These are Ere Ebeji figures, and they are made for this purpose, usually in pairs of male and female, and are carried prominently in a sash worn by the mother. The word Ebeji means twin, and Ere means sacred image. These twin effigies are placed on a family altar, and they're bathed, fed, taken to the marketplace, dressed, played with, just as a living child would be. These actions are intended to please the soul of the deceased twin, so that he or she will bring good fortune to the family. Though associated with individual deceased children, Ere Ebeji are not portraits, and Ebeji are shown as physically mature adults in the hopes that the child's spirit will return in another life and grow to adulthood. Our Hirschberg African Art Collection is so special for so many reasons, but probably one of the most rewarding to witness is how area educators have integrated the collection into their curriculum. Dr. Reinhild Jansen, Washburn University Art History Professor, has held classes here at the library and worked with us to pull pieces for art history students to study up close. And fiber arts professor at Washburn University, Betsy Nabarro, has used our collection to teach students about fiber and dyeing techniques. These in-person visits give students a chance to hold and interact with the objects in a live setting. Benefits of such a hands-on learning experience include realization of true scale and color, detail is more readily available, and sensory experiences like smell can become part of the learning experience. Our permanent collections are available to anyone who wishes to see them or incorporate them into their classroom.